Hi, today's video is on a special request from a viewer of the channel. His name is Aaron or Aaron, and it is about bus bars, wiring sizes. So the conductors you would use in a project uh, like here when you build your own uh, power wall. And to do this correctly, also for my viewers in the United States, today I have a paper and I wrote the diameters in AWG as well. So, so before we start with this, there is one basic rule I want to mention when we do a DIY stuff. When you build your own DIY project, you never go on to the limits. You never cross limits, you never push limits to the border. If you design this system to a wire limit, this also includes that the wire is getting hot. When we do DIY, we do not want anything hot in our system. We design our systems to stay cool because the last thing you want to do is burn down your house. Whenever you build your system, you have to know every system is special by its design. When calculating conductor sizes, you can easily calculate a maximum, but there will be degradation factors. And for wiring, those kind of degradation factors, ambient temperature, where the wire is laid, how it is laid, is it on open air, is it inside a conduit, etc. etc. So there's a lot of degradation factors which are calculated down from a maximum value. But because we are doing DIY, we, we are not making any industrial application here where it is very important to use the right dimensions because if you oversize you would have to spend much more money etc. This is not our concern here. Especially some factors like wire lengths and these kind of things we can completely disregard. Because in a system like this here we are talking about wire lengths of centimeters and feet and not hundreds of feet or hundreds of meters or anything. So this is all compact everything together. There is no voltage drops to be considered on a wire of 10 centimeters or anything like this. This, this would be ridiculous. So the main factor what we are concentrating on is currents and degradation factors to keep our system cool. So all these different degradation factors I will not mention in any way anymore because we will use our own one and I will call it the DIY degradation factor and this one I will set it to 30%. So we will look at every wire or bus bar here in the system and calculate its maximum current capability and degrade it by 30% and this will be our value we will use. Right, and the other thing is, in a DIY project you will typically only have two options of materials, which is copper or aluminium, and I will only talk about sizes which you could actually really go to a market and buy this. In the case of United States, AWG, I have no idea if I have a number here, an odd number, if you can go to the uh, market and buy this, or if, if there is only even numbers, whatever, you have to tell me, please comment on the down. Here in Thailand, when it comes to bus bars, I only have two options and those would be raw aluminium or raw copper. If in your country, which one might be far more developed, you can get copper bus bars which are nickel plated, stuff like that. That is very good, you can use that. You should use that if you are concerned about corrosion. It will not change uh, the electric characteristics of the material. It's still 
the copper inside which will conduct uh, the current. How do we calculate what size of bus bar or wire do we need? And for that it's so very simple, we keep it also very simple. You could of course go into the physics and calculate decimals, but that does not make a sense. We have to keep it simple. And I will also link a table in the description where you can all get all these in AWG, in square millimeters, etc. etc. For us the most important value is the current density. So this is how much current can a certain material carry per square mil millimeters, right, in scientific terms, to maintain a certain temperature range, so not to exceed its maximum rated uh, temperature. And this value for copper is 5 amps per square millimeter. For aluminium it's 3.5 amps per square millimeter. When we're talking about conductors, we're talking about them in cross-section, in square millimeters, or you will talk in the United States about AWG, that's a wire size, which have to be translated to square millimeters as well. So we will talk now about bus bars, 50 square millimeters, or cables, 16 square millimeters, 4 square millimeters, etc. etc. And we will find example for every size of it here in the power wall. So let's take a look and see if this is uh, correct. So first let's start with our bus bars. In my case I have bus bars which are from aluminium and the size of the bus bar is 25 millimeters by 2 millimeters. So in Imperial that equals to one inch by less than one eighth of an inch. So one eighth of an inch is three millimeters. We have two millimeters, so it's a little bit less. But if you calculate this to the cross section, this would be a 50 square millimeter bus bar. And because it's aluminium, we said three 0.5 amps per square millimeters. This bus bar can carry a maximum of 175 amps and we degrade it by our DIY factor minus 30% so 122 amps is what we would push through this bus bar. In my case my maximum current during charging is 45 amps and my maximum current during discharge is 30 amps so we are well above that current. Yeah, by the way, 50 square millimeters, that would equal to a AWG zero, right? So one O, oh, right? Now I was looking online, what could I buy in terms of copper instead of this? And I would have found a copper bar, one inch by one eighth of an inch, so that would be 25 by 3 millimeters or a cross section of 75 square millimeters it would equal to AWG between two zeros and three zeros. However, you have to really uh, say that, right? The copper bus by that size would be able to carry maximum of 375 amps. So this is really substantial amount of current. And if we degrade that again by our factor, 262 amps. So if you really have uh, a system which have to use a lot of current, you go for copper and big size bars. Okay, so that was my bus bars. Then I have here, these are my jumpers in between. These here are 16 square millimeters copper. 16 square millimeters copper is an AWG5. And the maximum current for that one is 80 amps. With our degradation factor, it's 56 amps. So this one is quite close to what I have uh, running here in maximum. So 5 amps constant current during charging. And if you touch these ones here during uh, the charging at the end of the day, they are hand warm, right? 
so you can feel it. So with this size I'm going until my DC bus and so through the breaker into the DC bus. This is my um, battery side. So here in the electronics compartment the wire sizes are getting now much smaller of course. We have our discharge inverter side and the charging side uh, which we have to look at now. The inverter is max pulling maximum of 1500 watts with the 50 volt side this is 30 amps and what I've used for the inverter is a six square millimeter copper and here it comes now so square millimeter copper can carry continuously 30 amps as a maximum so if we would degrade this by our DIY factor that would be 21 amps so this Y is actually undersized we can now of course say that uh, the 30 amps is uh, just a peak value that uh, the inverter will not always pull 30 amps it will also uh, pull less than that why did I take it? I did not have a 10 square millimeter by hand the next size I had by hand was 16 square and that is just too difficult to bend and this kind of stuff so I used a 6 square millimeter by but we are in limits but you have to be you have to know that this wire can get hot and that, that, that on that wire there is no room for expansion anymore so if, if there would be a change made here in the system which would require to pull more current the wire should be changed but that's not the worst now it comes to the wire of the chargers and those chargers of course are not DIY they are industrially made and the DC side of that charger is a four square millimeter wire. They are covered by a silicon insulation. This is a high temperature silicon. And there is also a temperature sensor here on the, on the cable. But if this charge is getting hot, it will actually reduce its output. So there is some protection there. But let's see just about the wiring size. So four square millimeters. I forgot to tell you. Six square millimeters. That would be a AWG9. So the four square millimeters. That is equal to a AWG11. And the maximum rating for that would actually be 20 amps. And if we degrade that it would be 14 but we don't need to degrade because we didn't make it by ourselves this is a finished product but you see even the manufacturer they actually undersized this right so 20 amps maximum for this charger would be okay this is a 20 amp charger but the other charge is a 25 amp charger and there's also a 30 amp charger if that also uses only a four square millimeter so it's quite hefty undersized so yeah, but that is how manufacturers work they are pushing the limits so they put it into high temperatures cables but you have to be aware that these cables can be really hot after some time of operation yeah and the rest inside here is just small cables small wire sizes because they are only 12 volt and signal and whatever so that was already it everything what you need for a battery build was covered by those uh, four sizes which i had to use in my case yeah and uh, that's what i can tell you always remember as a DIYer, you stay on the safe side never downsize your conductor always upsizes for safety i hope i covered everything if if i forgot anything important please use the comment section and tell me what was wrong if you would do something different if you would consider uh, more factors into this okay so thank you for watching please uh, like the video subscribe to the channel and i see you next time